Now let's look at the present value of an ordinary annuity. So example one here, Jane plans to put in $8,000 per year for three years, starting one year from today into her investment account. Okay, that she expects to earn 9% per annum. So calculate the present value of her investment or of that annuity. So we have uh, 8,000 here, okay, and then another 8,000 and another 8,000 in year three. So what we need to do now is to find the present value at time zero, which is today. We need to PV or discount the cash flows back to time zero. Okay, so to do that uh, would be a, a quite easy task. So for example, let's say for the first year's cash flow, okay, you will take 8,000, this divided by 1.09 to the power of one. Okay, because you're discounting back one year. And then for this, uh, the cash flow in year two, you will take 8,000 divided by 1.09 to the power of two. <clears throat> for year three, you'll take uh, 8,000 divided by 1.09 to the power of three. Then you will sum up all the three present values, okay, to get the total present value of her investment. Now, of course, if you are if you want to make this faster, you can use the financial calculator. So what you need to do is that here, uh, n is equal to three, okay, and we're using the ordinary annuity mode here because uh, this is one year from today. And then three here means that uh, we have three payments, okay, and it, the first payment starts one period one year from now. And then uh, IY will be nine for nine percent. Then uh, PV will be uh, something that we have to compute later. Uh, PMT will be the annuity amount, 8,000. Future value is zero, because at the end of the period, year three, there is no additional cash flow besides the 8,000. So now we have it, let's compute PV. So our total PV or the present value of an investment is $20,250, okay? So that's the total PV, $20,250. Right, now for example two, let's say the $8,000 that Jane plans to put in for three years is actually starting five years from today. So, and the expected return is still 9% and calculate the present value. Now this time around, if I draw the timeline, we have uh, from here, uh, we have one, okay, two, three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, okay. Um, so we only Jane only start plans to start putting the, the $8,000 in starting year, five years from today. So that's year five, and then another two years after that. So calculate the value of this investment at time zero. Now, of course, if you are doing this now uh, manually, uh, we'll have to take the cash flow. Let's say I'll take 8,000 here. So this would be 8,000 divided by 1.09, and this is discounted back five years, so that's power five. Then for the cash flow in year six, if we discount this back, that's 8,000 divided by 1.09 to the power of six. And for the last one, we will take this and discount it by 8,000 divided by 1.09 to the power of seven. Then you will sum it up. So that's the present value of the investment. Now, if you're using the financial calculator, do be a bit careful. So again, N here will be three because there are three payments here. Three is N. Okay, IY is 9 for 9%, uh, PMT is $8,000, and then FV is 0. Now let's compute PV. Now you, you will remember that this is the value that we saw earlier in example 1, but take note that the, cash, the first cash flow actually starts in year 5. And based on this, we are computing using END mode. Okay, the END mode, so this is an ordinary annuity. So the PV that we are getting here will be the PV the, uh, in the year before the first annuity payment, which is in this case year four. Okay, so this 20,250 is at year four. So this 20,250.36 is the present value of this $8,000, okay, summarized up. So once you get this number, 20,250, so to find the value at time zero, all we need to do is just PV this back to year zero. So we have to discount this number back by four years. So we'll take 20,000, I'll take 20,250.36 divided by 1.09 to the power of four. Okay, you can use a uh, financial calculator to do this, but I'll just discount this manually. So I'll just take divide by 1.09 to the power of four. So we'll get $14,346, okay? So this is the PV of Jane's investment. Now, of course, for some people, they may want to use the annuity deal mode, and you can do that. 
So let's say if I were to accidentally, let's say use the NOT deal mode, so I'll change it to NOT deal, BGN, right? So this time around, when I press compute PV, I'll be getting a larger number, okay? That's $22,073. And take note that because we are using this as in a BGN mode, so this is NOT deal, where the first cash flow happens today. So since our first cash flow is in year five, it means that the PV of these three, eight, three payments of $8,000 at year five is twenty two thousand and seventy three dollars. So now, when we calculate the P total PV of these three annuity payments, the PV in year five itself, okay, year five itself is twenty two thousand and seventy two dollars and eighty nine cents. Okay, if we if we uh, if I take the two decimal places, so now, if I want to find the PV at year in year zero, I will have to discount this back by five years instead of four years previously. So if I were to take this number, $22,072.89, and I discount it back by five years, we are going to divide by 1.09 to power of five, we'll get $14,346, which is exactly the same as uh, when I use the ordinary annuity mode. So we, you can actually use either mode to compute, but just be careful which mode you're using, okay? Because uh, if you're using END, which is the ordinary annuity mode, the PV will always be the year before the first annuity payment. Okay, if you're using BGN mode, which is annuity deal, the PV will be in the same year as the first annuity payment. As long as you clarify that, then you should be able to solve a lot of annuity type base of questions.